you want to escape and unwind in rolling countryside, if you fancy a paddle or plodge in local dialect along glorious unspoiled beaches, or maybe you fancy being king of the castle for a week or two, then come and make Northumberland your kingdom. Northumberland is officially the most tranquil region in England. But once upon a time, these hills rang with a clash of arms and echoed with the marching of the Roman legions. Nowadays, the magnificent landmarks of its turbulent past make landmark days out for all ages and interests. Hadrian's Wall, built almost 2,000 years ago to mark the northern limit of the Roman Empire, is still one of the most famous landmarks in the world. It's a breathtaking 84 mile long World Heritage Site with forts and mile castles to visit all along its length. At Vindelanda, you can see the excavated fort and a superbly reconstructed mile castle. There's a temple. There's a shop, there's even a coffee shop, not forgetting the fabulous Vindelanda writing tablets. Over a thousand ancient postcards have been unearthed and two in particular make the 2,000 years since they were written seem more like two minutes. The first is a birthday invitation by a certain Claudia Severa to Sulpicia Lepidima and it's full of girly chat at a time when men most certainly outnumbered women in the community. On the third day before the Ides of September, sister, for the day of the celebration of my birthday, I give you a warm invitation to make sure that you come to us. The second is a more down-to-earth note from a soldier talking about a purchase of socks and underpants. I have sent you pairs of socks from Satua, two pairs of sandals and two pairs of underpants. The historic town of Annick, home of the Dukes of Northumberland, has a glorious mix of sights to see from the stunning castle where Harry Potter learned to fly, to barter books described by the new statesman as the British Library of Second-Hand Bookshops. The Annick Garden is the breathtaking result of the Duchess of Northumberland's vision to create a garden to be enjoyed by everyone, a blossoming space for inspiration, education and sheer pleasure. The Grand Cascade is the largest water feature of its kind in the UK, and you can explore one of the largest tree houses in the world via suspended rope walkways, just for fun. Over there is Lindisfarne, a holy island as it's known locally. It's reached by a causeway and it's cut off twice daily by the tide. And it's probably because it was such a peaceful retreat that early English Christians established their settlement here. They were led by St Aidan, who became the first Bishop of Lindisfarne. His statue stands outside Lindisfarne Priory ruins, and he's holding the torch or light of Christianity in his hand, although to some modern visitors it looks like he's holding an ice cream cornet. Some years later, St Aidan was followed by St Cuthbert, in whose honour the famous Lindisfarne Gospels were written on the island in the 7th century. Cuthbert died on the Farns in 687 AD and his body was buried on Lindisfarne. Eleven years later, when his coffin was opened up, to everyone's amazement, his body was still as fresh as the day it was buried. In the 9th century, the Vikings attacked Lindisfarne and the community who were looking after St Cuthbert's body decided they had to find a place of safety for their man. So they hoisted his coffin onto their shoulders and they roamed the region until Cuthbert appeared to his followers in a vision and told them he wanted to rest forevermore in the place we now know as Durham. As well as these major historical sites, visitors also enjoy the Edward Lutyens Castle, the beautiful Gertrude Jekyll Garden, sampling the local mead and enjoying a day with friendly locals. Exploring the island reveals unique and spectacular views of the nearby coast and once witnessed, you'll understand why this place has an atmosphere which can only be described as magical. The border town of Berwick-upon-Tweed is one of the best examples of an Elizabethan fortified town in Europe and in the last century it provided the setting for more than 30 paintings by the artist L.S. Lowry, as you can discover on the L.S. Lowry trail around the town. Arguably the grandest vista of the town is from any of the great bridges that span the Tweed. And if you look south, you can even see Bamburgh and Holy Island in the far distance. 
Northumberland's home to some picture-perfect villages. Blanchland is one of England's oldest and prettiest and was built around a 12th century abbey. The Lord Crewe Arms Hotel contains part of the Canons refectory as well as reputedly its own ghost. The twin estate villages of Ford and Eatle boast their own light railway and make a great day out. Must-sees include the old village school, now the Lady Waterford Hall at Ford, with its beautiful watercolour murals featuring many of the village children of the time. For me, this is a truly magical place. Chillingham Park is home to the last remaining herd of pure wild cattle in the world. And they've been roaming these natural surroundings for over 700 years. Now, Austin Widows is one of the wardens who will help you get as close as possible to these very special beasts. Now, we're standing in a field, we're in a lovely countryside, but there is always just an air of danger because they are cattle that have been completely untouched by humans. They have got used to visitors, and provided we don't do anything silly, they tolerate us at this sort of distance. But but uh, any closer and we would be in danger, especially if there's a calf with its mother's about. And what's the furthest that somebody has travelled especially to come and see these cattle? Oh, we've had people from Australia, New Zealand. That's been their lifetime's ambition, is to come and see these cattle. You can stay at the very impressive Chilliam Castle just up the road, which is reportedly one of the most haunted castles in northern England. The Radiant Boy was one of its most famous ghostly inhabitants. Legend has it that for years the cries and moans of a child could be heard in a passageway which had been cut through a ten-foot thick wall and sensitive souls sleeping in the pink room would see a boy dressed in blue and surrounded by light approaching them. Whether you like your accommodation haunted or not, you'll find an excellent choice in Northumberland to suit all tastes and budgets. You can stay in castles or country houses, cosy bed and breakfasts or idyllic self-catering cottages around Kielder Forest or the Northumberland coast area of outstanding natural beauty. Many places boast fantastic food, making the most of the region's fresh local produce. Or you can buy local specialities to cook yourself at numerous farmers markets around the region. And the good news is that it's also easy to get to with great access by road, rail, air and sea. We look forward to welcoming you soon.